Let's now add a little detail to the top and bottom where a rubber overmold would be included in the handle. I'll go into my right view and draw a couple curves and I'm doing this with object snaps disabled and my grid snap disabled so I have the greatest amount of freedom of movement. And I'll draw another curve representing this top. And what I'll do is draw a line between the two endpoints. Now notice my object snaps are off. If I just hold down the Alt key, that temporarily toggles them back on. And then I'll select all four of these and join them. And that gives me two closed curves. Next in the solid tools, I'll go in and grab wire cut right here, select a cutting curve and the object to cut, enter. Now normal to curve will be the curve plane, so the same thing as the right view that we're looking in here. And I want to use both sides uh, since it's smack in the middle of the handle at the moment. And I want to keep all the objects created. Now I don't want to delete the curve because I may want to edit it later, so I'll just press enter and then I'll enter to run the exact same command again with the same settings. And if you check out perspective now, you can see we've got these three solid chunks and that's what wire cut gives us. It's really extruding a surface and trimming them against each other. And if we go into ghosted mode here, let me turn on my ISO curves and edges so you can see. Now I don't need all these curves in the file at the moment, but I don't necessarily want to throw them away. So I'm going to use the command cell curve, cell CRV, and then immediately move all those to another layer just by left clicking the layer pop-up and then left clicking another layer name. And you can see they're on layer two now, and I can hide and show that. And if I double click right there, I can label that curves and layer one was our uh, box. Okay, now I'll zoom in on these areas here that we've created and what I want to do is connect them with a few pipes uh, right between. So these two areas would be the same material in the molding of the handle and they'd be made out of a rubber and so uh, typically these are two connected uh, portions and they grip the other material here which is often a translucent plastic. So I'll make from the top view here a cylinder and I'll turn on my grid snap. Fast way to do that is just with the F9 key and then control tab to toggle my viewport. And let me turn off my grid snap again, F9. And with the gumball active, I'm just going to drag it to the side here, tap Alt to make a copy like that. And I can tap Alt again, make another copy. I'll hold down Control and remove that from the selection. Just like that. Okay, now with these objects selected, we'll use a Boolean union command and combine them into one. And that's also in the solid tools. It's this one right here. And now this is one solid object. Now for the sake of the rendering more than the manufacturing, I want to round these edges right here. And we'll use fillet edge to do that. And let me click right here and you can see these arrows that pop up indicating which surface you are selecting. And if you click in the same spot, you get the other one. Now I'm going to use the distance from edge option and I'm using a radius of 0.1 millimeters here.
And I'll do the same thing on the bottom. So enter to run the same command and you can see the two options and the arrows indicating which edge is which. But we want both, so just select one and then click in the same spot to select the other. And notice because of the seam of the loft, we have to do the same thing on the other side here. And I'll use those same settings, point 0.1 and distance from edge. If I go into rendered mode, you can see how that creates a nice break line between the materials. Let's finish off the handle with a displacement modifier on the rubber overmold. We'll go into Render Tools, click on Apply Displacement, make a new texture, more types, and I'm going to start with a 2D checker texture. And I'll make it 2 in one direction and 0.5 in the other, like that. And you can see this gives you stripes maybe just one, because we can adjust the repeat later. And in the black section, I'll add a gradient. In this gradient, I'll rotate it 90 degrees. And I'll also tile it twice in this direction. And then click Flip Alternate Gradients and also Swap Colors. And it gives me this white band with fall off on either side. And I'll click OK. And you can make this color just black like that. And now we have just one stripe. And then I'll say OK. And I'll leave all the default settings right now. And you can see there doesn't appear to be much of a change, but this object has a displacement modifier on it now. And all those same settings are available to you here. So I'll click uh, high as the initial quality. And then I'll click texture mapping and apply a texture map that's planar to this object. Up in the command line, you can pick how this planar widget gets assigned to the object. I'll click bounding box and in the world space just accept that and this will make it flat like we see in the top construction plane and just enter to accept the next option as well. And you can see just a stripe down the side now. So if you go over into texture mapping and object properties you can click show mapping and you can rotate the mapping widget with the gumball. So I'll hold down shift like that. And so the wider this is, the less stripes we get. Now there's all sorts of other controls here. If you select the object again, go back into displacement, we can change the white point height to say be 0.3. And let's change our refined sensitivity to 1. and select the mapping widget, which is controlling our tiling now of these stripes, and just squeeze it together like that until we can see the effect. And I want the detail to be better than this, so I'll go back into the displacement and go to very high. And let's see if we can get it even better than that. Go to extremely high. And if it disappears entirely, it means you hit the mesh memory limit. And that's this number here. And so it's set at 64 megabytes um, by default. I'll make it 256 instead. And you can see the displacement gets recalculated. And now it's really nice and crisp. This controls how many polygons are used in the displacement. Now we can rotate the mapping widget as well. And the displacement will re recalculate and we can see the result. Now if the object with the, the texture map assigned to it or the mapping widget itself are selected, you'll have the ability to click hide mapping here and then the mapping widget is just hidden from view. And this displacement, although not real geometry yet, 
could be extracted with Extract Render Mesh, and you can see it in any shaded mode.